A neuron is an individual nerve cell. It's a brain cell that receives, integrates, and transmits information to other cells. You have about a hundred billion neurons in your brain, but that's not the only thing that's in there. You also have something called glial cells, which are basically just supporting cells. They create like a complex support network for the neurons. And it's, this, it's these networks of neurons, it's these interconnected, super complex, you know, uh, systems of neurons all working together that allow us to have all the thoughts we do. Like every thought you've ever had consists of patterns of these complex networks of neurons communicating e with each other. So when it comes to the basic parts of a neuron, the neuron has three uh, parts. So first of all, there is the cell body. You could also call it the soma, you know, the body of the neuron. That's where you find all the important uh, internal features like the nucleus and mitochondria and all that kind of stuff. So the point of the soma is to collect information, basically. And it gets that information from the branchy looking part that we call uh, dendrites. So dendrites are these branchy little extensions that uh, go out from the soma and their p purpose is to detect and receive messages and then send them to that soma. Now once enough information is collected in the soma then we will see an electrical signal, an electrical impulse s s be sent down uh, the neuron's tail looking structure. Uh, it also kind of looks like a wire. The term we use for it is the axon. So the axon is this long, narrow fiber that carries that electrical signal from the soma to, you know, basically the junction with the next neuron. Neurons, just by their nature, uh, they have what's called a resting potential. That's just what they're normally at. That's like a default setting. Neurons, just by their nature, have a, like a resting potential of about negative 70 millivolts. So they're just inherently you know, negatively polarized. Now, when it, the neuron starts to collect that information, it, the information it's collecting are ions, positively charged ions. And if it collects enough of those positive ions, uh, if, it, if it gets down to about negative 50 millivolts, then we'll see the neuron fire. And that just means it'll trigger that uh, electrical signal. You could also call it a nerve impulse. So it'll send uh, that electrical signal down the axon. Uh, so when an axon fires, we call it an action potential. So when, an, when that nerve impulse is triggered by the soma, uh, you could call that an action potential. So what you're going to see during an action potential is that that negative 50 millivolt charge will cl quickly you know, shoot all the way up to positive 30 and then quickly back down again. So it has this kind of stereotypical like peak of positive 30 then comes right back down again. And there's no such thing as like a, a half fire or a partial fire. If a neuron fires, it's always going to do this exact same pattern. It's like a all or nothing kind of event. It, it, the neuron either fires or it doesn't fire. It's that simple. But like I said, after the neuron fires, after it gets up to positive 30, it'll quickly shoot back down again and what we actually see is that for a very brief period of time, for about one millisecond or less, uh, the neuron will be a little bit less than negative 70. So that's even more negative, you know, that just means it's a little bit less likely to fire than it would be normally. Now the axons of most neurons in your brain, at least, are covered in what's called myelin. Myelin is this kind of white fatty layer, it almost looks like a sheath. Like imagine like the rubber casing on an electrical cord. It's pretty conceptually similar. But the purpose of this myelin isn't really just to protect the axon. The purpose of this myelin sheath is actually to make the neuron uh, transmit that information faster. So when you put myelin on an axon, that electrical signal, that you know nerve impulse can travel up to a hundred times faster. Now, myelin 
comes from glial cells. So the glial cells that are creating the support structure, they're also myelinate, myelinating those axons. And you have different glial cells in your brain and, and other parts of your body to serve this purpose. Like there's basically four kinds of glial cells. Uh, you've got the oligodendrocytes, so those create the myelin sheaths in the central nervous system, you know, brain and spinal cord. And then there's Schwann cells, uh, which create similar kinds of myelin sheaths, but now that's mostly in the peripheral nervous system. So that means, you know, everywhere that's not brain and spinal cord. And then there's other kinds of glial cells that help to create support structures but aren't really involved in myelination, like uh, astrocytes. Those are the largest glial cells. Uh, they look kind of like stars. That's why we call them astrocytes. And then there's microglia, which are, as you might imagine, very small glial cells. So that electrical charge will trigger the release of a bunch of chemicals that we call neurotransmitters into this little microscopic gap in between uh, the, the first neuron's axon and the second neuron's dendrite. That, that microscopic gap is what we call synapse. So if you think about it, uh, axons and uh, dendrites don't actually touch each other. None of your neurons are actually touching each other. They're coming in very, very, very close, but they never actually touch. And all your little neurotransmitters are stored in these little uh, like packages. They're like little bubbles in that axon terminal. So when the electrical signal you know, arrives, it's going to push out these vesicles, releasing the neurotransmitters into that synaptic gap where they'll kind of just float around aimlessly. They're just simple chemicals. You know, they don't really have a mind of their own. And some of them will bind with what we call receptors on the uh, second neuron's dendrite. Those receptors, it's, you can basically think of it as just like a lock and a key. Like you have different neurotransmitters that fit different receptors. So if it's making it uh, more positive, you know, potentially bringing it down to that negative 50 millivolt threshold. But it's certainly not this simple. Whenever you have an electrical charge reach an axon terminal, it's going to trigger the release of tons of little neurotransmitters. But this entire process can occur within the span of just a few milliseconds. Like, your neurons can communicate with each other at incredibly fast rates. Here's a table just showing all the different major kinds of neurotransmitters that there are and what they do. So, first of all, you have things like acetylcholine, which is important for motor control, memory, learning, uh, rapid eye movement, sleep. Uh, and then you have epinephrine, which is involved in uh, metabolism of glucose, energy release. Uh, norepinephrine, which is involved in arousal, alertness, uh, eating, wakefulness. Then there's dopamine, which is involved in pleasure and reward, attention, and voluntary movement. And serotonin, which is important for emotional states and impulse control. Uh, GABA, which is involved in uh, action potential inhibition and anxiety reduction. Glutamate, which is involved in action potential excitation learning and memory and then there's uh, a bunch of different kinds of endorphins which are important for pain relief and pleasure.